Yeah, thank you. And also thank all of you for staying that long. It's uh, almost over, it's just me. So uh, my name is Christian. Um, I do cloudy things at BWI, uh, GmbH, which is the IT supplier for the German Armed Forces. You can ask me offstage what we do. Um, but today I'm here to give you an impulse about um, maybe considering doing Rust or using Rust for your next operator implementation, whenever you do implement an operator. So I use Linkerd uh, as service mesh as the example here. Um, so what does Linkerd do? It's, uh, it's a service mesh. It's been around for eight years by now, I think, or eight plus years. It does transparent MTLS for your workloads. It has policies so you can use it to uh, um, actually safeguard your services amongst each other. You get observability out of it, reliability features, retries, gRPC load balancing, all these kind of things. Um, Linkerd follows... Oh, Three design uh, principles that are interesting here. The first one is keep it simple, so you don't want to have that much of a, of a cognitive overhead here. It's good, but not crucial for what we want to talk about. Then you have the minimized resource requirements. Since Linkerd is using the sidecar model, that's natural. You want them to be very, very efficient and have less overhead. And the third one is it just works. So you want that to be everywhere, essentially, and you also want it to just work all the time. Um, and that brings us to how the architecture looked like. So it's, it's, it's a very traditional architecture for that sort of thing. So you have the control plane and you have sidecar proxies. There's this debate about sidecar proxies versus uh, centralized ones. That's not what this is about. They just use it. So the question was, how do you implement a control plane? Traditionally, you do that with Golang. Naturally, you want to use Kubernetes client Go. And that's awesome. It's a very mature language. It's a great ecosystem, lots of support. Nothing wrong with that. The Linkerd team, for the sidecars a while ago, I made a bit of a bold move because it was early on in the Rust language and decided to go with Rust for the sidecars. So they are all implemented in Rust, that systems programming language that essentially um, is very low level, but it also introduces a lot of safety features. So you have no garbage collection pauses, no nil pointers, concurrency issues, these kind of things. So at least the language helps you a bit more to avoid them if you can. Um, because what becomes apparent, if you look at the history of Linkerd and also the control plane, and also recently I just checked in with um, uh, at the team on GitHub and, and um, yeah, basically took a look of what the recent issues were that you would experience. And these are four recent issues in the policy controller would result in, no, not the policy controller because that's implemented in Rust, but the uh, actually destination controller, which was... Uh, would actually result from these runtime issues that you that are a bit hard to catch, like concurrency, race conditions, uninitialized variables, these kind of things. So when implementing the policy controller, the Linkerd team thought about what could we do about this potentially? Would it be possible to implement that in Rust maybe? Is that a good idea at all? Because we could avoid these things and as, like with a policy controller or basically any control plane, maybe you want to really keep it up. It's not so much of an issue in... Um, in data centers um, or even a full-face cloud environments where you can just restart things and it's not that much of an issue. But if you're in more edge environments or something like that, you might want this to just keep running if possible. So two examples to make it a bit um, more graspable. I hope this is readable, actually. I think it's a bit small. I'm sorry. So this is just a stupid Go code that just fails immediately. But... Um, it compiles fine and it just works. So there is no error program exited, but it actually creates an error. In Rust, uh, you can write the same, but you get a warning. So you can ignore the warning, but that's on you then. So Rust tells you, well, this code will fail. And of course, this also works in more complex scenarios. Secondly, here we have an example where there's an uninitialized variable. It's just not initialized and we're trying to access this. This compiles fine in Golang, but it creates a runtime error. And, well, that's not good. And it's in, in complex code bases, it might be hard to capture that. Whereas in Rust, the same example creates a runtime, uh, a compiler error, actually, so it won't compile at that point, which helps you to prevent these situations. There's more examples. There's also a nice talk from Oliver Gould, the um, CTO from Buoyant, the creators of Linkerd like from two years ago, where it goes through more of these details, uh, but due to the time here, this is the two I have. So just to give you an idea of what you could save. Now the question is, um, what's all the plumbing that is now available in Golang, like all the operator frameworks, all the nice libraries and that? 
And, and how to do that in Rust? Well, there is KubeRS, which is essentially the Kubernetes client Go for Rust. So that's covered. Um, then actually Oliver implemented Kubert, or I did a lot of work on, on Kubert, which is the Kubernetes operator framework for Rust. Um, and recently there's also a Prometheus crate, crate being the library format for Rust that allows you to also add those metrics in a nice way to your Rust operator. So there's now really a good ecosystem and there has been many implementations, I think like 25 operators in Rust by now. So if you're in an environment where that is interesting to you or you just want to try it, these three projects are highly recommended. And also on that conference, if you want to do um, a more in-depth deep dive on that topic, there's two talks, one by Maite and one by Flynn. And Flynn, I'm sorry, I messed up your QR code, so you have to look that up for yourself. Um, the Rust Revolution, how Rust is the future of cloud native, that even goes a bit further into, into thinking uh, whether Rust might be something to use on other projects as well. And with that, I'd like to thank you and wish you to have a very great KubeCon and a good evening. Thanks. <laughs>